Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to a new dive in life, and um, I'm really happy because it's been a while. 
And today I'm here with Mr. Raj, Mr. Wazu. <laughs> Welcome. What sir. up? Nice. I'm, I'm happy you're here. And you just came back from a run. You told me. Uh, I did. Yes. Nice. So you've uh, you're fresh and fruity. I'm I'm always like really excited like for you that you are and you're rocking the states at the moment. I see you play from San Francisco, to L.A., and New York, and Canada. You've been, I believe, and you yeah, know that's right. And running like uh, like seven miles. I don't know marathons. It's crazy. Yeah this this month has been a bit of a struggle in terms of in terms of running. Actually, um, yeah. So all this all the cities that you listed are were, were within like the last like two to three weeks. Um, but Miami, Miami, Miami into, into San Francisco is pretty rough because I went straight to the club, straight, uh, straight from the club to the airport um, where I played a day party the next day in SF, which was brutal. Yeah. Um, but it's part of, part that's, of the game. Right? That's the DJ life. Eh? It gets, and that's what a lot of people say as well. Like, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's fun, but it's also, you know, at the moment you start traveling a lot, it gets pretty lonely and you know you go from one party and then you're like oh, and you have to go to the next one it's uh, but you know it's good you stay fresh and and run i think that's also a very important part of, of wanting to do this like full time you know yeah i think it kick starts me back into a routine you know it's like number one it's like a good way to detox from the weekend obviously but um two it's just kind of it's just kind of a good way to settle back into the week that's that's one of the main reasons why i do it and i also like it's one of the few moments in the day where i don't um my mom got me uh my mom got me a garmin 945 watch actually last year for christmas and it's i think it's similar to like an apple watch where you can sync up your spotify to it so you don't even have to run with your phone at all to sync yeah, up like i, I just bought a samsung watch and because i was running with like a uh a- yeah uh, my phone like strapped on my arm and you know at some point you don't feel your fingers you're like oh you have to you know this is way better nice so the garmin one so you just, so, so your phone so your watch as well you don't need you don't need to carry your phone you can just sync up your, I, your yeah, spotify to it's, that. it's one with i think it's lte it's called lte so it, it has like a uh, reception and stuff so I, I can just run it i can even re- i can even reply to messages and stuff i get notifications even even if even if you were to leave your phone back at the apartment uh, yeah exactly so i don't need to bring my phone i can just run with the watch that's the that's the whole point of this thing yeah it's like uh your phone on your wrist basically yeah it's uh it's it's game changing honestly um yeah. so yeah going back to my point like it's one of the few moments like the, the the hour or like the hour and a half or two hours or however long i'm running in the day that like i don't have my phone on me so it's kind of like and it's like the only time i get to like really just stop and think about stuff you know um, yeah so It's, yeah, li- uh, likewise, man. Like, I th- I think having good routines is it's so nice. Just to run, you know. I recently been doing jujitsu. Then you don't think of anything, just to like, except the choke, <laughs> you know. But it's is that it's like all- a class? Is it like a class with people in it, or like yeah, or, yeah, like, or. Yeah, yeah, you get you like a bunch of people. You got gi and no gi. It's it's you know, and it's such a workout because it's at the end you like do a little rolling, and it's it's so heavy, man, for the for your for your stamina and your just to your your uh, yeah your your full you using your full body. So it's a really good workout. And next to running and swimming, it's I think it's great and necessary. The only thing what I like about running more is that I can listen to music. So if I've made some music, I check out music on the run. Do you do this as well? Do you check your mixes? or uh or something it i mean if i'm running with these certain uh this, these special compression shorts that i have they have like one of those like s- uh, side pockets that i can like that i can just like throw my phone in so, so sometimes i do that um but candidly it's not not the most comfortable in the world yeah. um so i'd rather just run with the watch and leave the phone at home but yeah I, even like my own mix when i'm out running like no i never listen to my own music i don't think i ever have ever I always I like it. I have to check with the watch because we just got it two days ago, and maybe yeah, there's isn't there a SoundCloud app for uh, not on for not watch? on mine yeah. not on my, not on my watch. I'll check it out. Um, If maybe I'll I'll check it out. Otherwise, you have to upgrade your watch. Oh, but you got it from your mom, you know, so you don't want to go like I'm hey, already bought it. Yeah, <laughs> I think when I was looking at music and stuff, all I really saw was was Spotify. So um, yeah, yeah, it's also nice. I think no, but I think I think the thing is though with Spotify with this, it, it's like you have to have your playlists um in offline mode right so like mm-hmm. yeah. i don't i don't think it actually connects to the internet when it's playing your music it's just like using the playlist that it synced from when it was connected to wi-fi yeah 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 
Nice, man. Well, it's good to have you back. Uh, I see Joost uh, saw that I have a new mic. Yes, I <laughs> I had some some uh, trouble with my mic. I had some, uh, some it's so funny story. I had like lots of noise on my mic. And uh, or, like, every time I would start the 48 volts on my, my sound card, I checked all the cables and like, all right. And it still like was there. So I thought, okay, maybe it's the it's the sound card. So you got a new sound card, came back, <laughs> same problem as fuck. And then, you know, then it stopped with the old mic. But then I, I had to bring back the other. Yeah, I had to go back to the store. I said, well, yeah, can I get my money back? Or, you know what? I'll just buy a new mic, you know. So I thought that the other mic was really like years old. I thought, why not upgrade to a Rode NT1? Nice. When did you get that? Yeah, it looks new. Yesterday. Or no. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Well, that's a little little Christmas present for yourself. Yeah, yeah, like uh, like the whole studio actually is, you know, like uh, like I. Did you put up? Did you put up? Yeah, it looks like you put up some some bass traps and stuff. Like, how long did that take? Yeah, well, you know, it's I got them made for me because I'm 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 like in Dutch we say I've got two left hands, so I'm really not handy. It will take me like like a week <laughs> to make all this and then to hang it up, man, and everything would be like oh god, yeah tilted and whatnot so i uh, i got somebody to make them and then i got somebody to uh to hang it all up for me and and it's it's really nice i, I got a rug and it sounds so nice and it's it's just also like the whole situation like the i've got the lights you know and it's it's really really inspiring to have a separate room and, and to sit there and and you can work on your speakers and your speakers sound nice for me it's it's yeah, it's it's uh, essential, you know. This is my life, you know. I live more in this room than in the other rooms, <laughs> so it's it's really nice when it's comfortable. I got this like uh, thing now because before I would had like a stand and the stand would constantly fall. I think therefore the mic was already also. That's kind of my mic right now. Yeah, it's just like on a mic stand. That's yeah, it. yeah. You get you, you have can... like a boom. You have like a boom. You have like a boom stand basically. Yeah, you can buy more. Uh, there are more expensive ones like two and a half. Two, uh, two and I have one. Bucks. I have one when I sh I have one back there when I stream actually have like pretty much the same boom stand more or less um, yeah yeah because there's good so. stands that they don't fall out all over but yeah you know i'm behind my desk and it's it's nice you know maybe if in future the room is a little bit too small for for a vocal booth but i think i can could record vocals as well the room is pretty tight so it's uh it's nice so then i'll just if i have a singer i go here you go you sing something <laughs> dude whenever you come to new york and you like like visit my apartment or whatever you're, you're gonna laugh at my studio setup <laughs> yeah i was supposed to go uh, end of february but i canceled everything. i know yeah 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 man i'm gonna stay home for i think for a year maybe i'll do burning man next year like only that and for the rest i just want to be home and focus on music sports and just, uh, enjoying spain for a bit i've been here and the only thing i saw was valencia and ibiza so it's time to maybe go to madrid or barcelona again or yeah yeah you know and, and uh, you think you think you think nice you're gonna night. you think you're gonna do uh you think you're gonna do ade next year as well yeah 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 ade i will definitely go that's something like burning man ade I for sure will do and for the rest yeah if, if somebody wants to book me for for you know for a nice price then i'll go out but you know, if I can be home in a studio and just make music, that's that's when I'm the happiest. So for me, it's uh, it's nice. Yeah, but you'd be. I was worried. Yeah, I was worried. I was worried for AD because I didn't like. I slept on the uh, uh, the pro pass, which is like all the. It's like the passes to like obviously all the parties and stuff, mm -hmm. but the exhibits. Yeah. Like the. Uh, yeah, like not, not the lectures, but like whatever you want to call them. Like yeah, I guess the exhibits. Um, and I was like, damn, like did I sleep on this? Like did I just did I not act on this? quickly enough like am i going to be able to meet enough people i'm like <laughs> i didn't really make any like hard, like hard set in stone plans but, like the amount of people that i just like met organically and just met like out and about whether it was like at parties like over yeah. coffee whatever like you meet so many people and i think that's the appeal of amsterdam versus miami music week because like miami music week is one it's like so party focused it's like got such an emphasis on just the parties rather than like networking and like you know seminars and coffee chats or whatever but like also too like miami's pretty difficult to get to for like europeans and stuff mm, whereas like amsterdam yeah. is like sure for like people in the states it's you know especially if you're in california it's it's not the easiest to get to but like for everyone in europe and even the east coast of the states it's like you can still get like a direct flight, you know so <laughs> yeah. like, that, like everyone is there I, I felt like i felt like everyone in my scene was kind of out there it's pretty pretty wild yeah yeah i've never been actually to uh to the miami um i've never been to miami i was supposed to go to miami as well in february also i <laughs> canceled it man i'm like fuck it we'll stay home but uh yeah i think you know like amsterdam like the amsterdam dance event i've been going for many years 
and I I just love that it's like it's very really the community gets together and you get to meet like lots of people that you haven't seen for years or you know it's nice you just you don't really need the pass but you know it's nice to have it you know I, I think it, it's the second time I had the pass and it was uh, it was really cool because I could go to like three or four parties in one night and just say hi and give high fives everywhere it, it was really uh, that was really handy but I don't think you necessarily need it to have a good time if you make uh if you make some plans you know some people you can get some guest lists for, for parties and it doesn't have to cost a lot also to get around you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah it just felt like so like easy like just chill laid back like there were a lot of parties for sure but it didn't feel like as intense as music week i guess yeah. um well i'm glad we got to meet up you know it was the first yeah, was time so in 3d <laughs> yeah that one party we went to for your your idol your your live idol was that was um that was that was fun that was that was a good little little group that we had yeah the Lucian Fort uh but it was nice and also to see uh to see Sun and Dom you know it's just really nice you have a good bunch of uh good crew with you yeah I I loved it when uh what was his name he told me about that cakewalk the one of the programs I used years ago he knew he he said it was still on this cakewalk is a is a DAW for Windows what was his name. Uh, uh, he he knew everything about uh about my, one of, one of my buddies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, was it Tommy? Maybe Tommy. Yeah, it must be Tommy. Probably Tommy. Yeah. Yeah, it's super nice. I I was like, he said, no, what cakewalk? I still use cakewalk. Cakewalk? That's like from years ago when I started out. And then he told <laughs> me the whole thing how cakewalk just has all these features that that were way before everything else had it. So really nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah man so on the music side um it's going pretty well I, all day i dream and you see the sound garden release and you're doing remixes you've been really really busy this year as well like i remember that when we started doing these sessions that was like uh i said already two years ago yeah just about man wow. just about and then um, we did like half a year or something and then yeah you know you kept the, because then it was mo mainly uh anuna but then at some point you just started doing doing soundgarden and and, and uh, other labels warung you know i think i sent you that label Warung's like, and I'll, yeah tried, you did yeah, you did yeah, yeah. yep yeah like hey try these guys yeah yeah cool yeah so, um so which track just yeah i was just looking through because like i only have 500 um let's see I only have 500 uh, gigs of storage on my on my local drive, so I'm trying to find the three. I'm trying to find the three tracks that I sent you that I said we would uh, that we would go through. If you just give me a. <laughs> yeah, you no know worries. what I mean. Like, like no it's worries. like each project. Each next... project is like is like three to four gigs, so it's just like. Dude, next ugh. computer, buy an. Eight, I've got an eight terabyte, dude. It's the best thing, and I I know it's expensive. But it's a great choice, you know. If you if you decide on okay, I'm gonna use this computer to make music for the coming five six years, buy the best one you can get and the biggest drive because I don't have to carry around any. I have one hard drive, uh, a, um, a ten uh, gigabytes. Uh, there are eight gigabytes as well, and it's just doing a time machine backup and all the yeah, rest. I'm yeah. working from the cloud, you know. I got like a Dropbox account, so it's nice because I never have to worry. Everything's still on my computer always, which is really nice. So you know upgrade that stuff i know i know i'm definitely once i get a new computer i think i'm waiting for the um the second generation of the, the m2 um, yep them too yeah, yeah 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 exactly uh before i before i upgrade to a new computer but yeah i think it, like at that point like i would want to get like a four terabyte local but four at, it, least. at that point yeah, just, yeah. just 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 spend the extra like what is it like thousand bucks and just yeah you know you, it's you worth don't even it. have to like carry any externals around. Exactly, right? it's, it's like, so worth it. And if you have if you have one time machine backup, that's fine. And then if you have like a cloud where you, I always back up everything in the cloud as well. So mainly all my all the projects I work from are synced with the cloud and me. So if something happens to my computer, uh, it's always back up in the cloud, like data wise. And I also have the time machine that I'm running like every week. So you know, unless my house burns down, I still have all the data in in the. Um, in the cloud which is nice it's you know it's a it costs a lot but you know if you if you think about it let's say you spend you spend five or six thousand 
uh, dollars or euros on the computer, which is a lot. But over the course of six years, it's a thousand bucks a year for just your well, work, basically. I don't know how uh, you still have this other job next to it. Like, do you still full timely? Full time. Yeah, you're crazy yep. and working and playing. Man, you must be rich by now. You must you be you'll be able to buy two computers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know about that, but uh <laughs> it's uh it's certainly a grind, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, cool. good news is good news is I did I it? did find them. Yeah, I got all th- I got all three. So, I just yes. moved them to my uh to my to my local for now. Um So, is there any preference on which one you uh you, we start with? Uh yeah, we should start with Camus. for sure for sure all right let me see dummy splash Um, welcome man good you're watching beast work ethic yeah man i always respect a lot the guys that have the full-time job next to it man it's uh dude it is yeah it um i mean i I don't even think like candidly i don't even think i'd be able to do it if um if we if we were full-time like monday through friday like in the office like covid's been like such a blessing in that regard um you know, like just being able to like work from home Mondays and, and Fridays, right? So. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice, man. I love working from home. <laughs> yeah, it's you need like in this kind of environment where you're just yeah. doing like, I mean, you don't even really need to be in the office that much. I think like These everyone's kind of come to terms with the uh, yeah. with the three day a week work policy. Yeah, definitely changed during, since COVID, I think, many because back in the day, I used to work call centers, and uh, I, I remember that sometimes I could work from home. They would, you know, if you work hard, you could do one sometimes from home, and you log in to answer emails, you know, and then you would just be doing emails, all that, which was fun, you know. You stay home, you have your tea, you wake up, you, you do your work, but you're at home. You don't have to travel time, you know. So not having travel time for like an hour to work, an hour back, it's already two hours, which you could spend on, for instance, making music, you know, so... Yeah, yeah, but you exactly. know, we're, we're lucky anyway. We have everything. Hey, look, wisdom. There she is. Dom is here. Dom is here. All righty. Good to see you, Dom. Yeah, I just moved. I'm I, like, I just moved over. Um, Love Sparkles, for example, and that's that project in and of itself is six gigs. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, <laughs> Camus loading, by the way. I don't know why it's taking so long, but it's yeah. it's going. Yeah, wow, that was the one where you added some swing, right? Because I, I'm, uh, it was. Yeah, like and swing. I think it's taking so long because the amount of freaking contact libraries that I have in there. That's probably why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, man. Um, <laughs> God, that came out. That came out back in April. Now. What you? April. That came out back. Oh in yeah, April. yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I just saw a I, message coming in from Andrew Colgan. He said, I used to work from home and do some Ableton on my breaks. Now I don't work there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did it in your breaks. <laughs> you did it in your breaks. Probably got a bit too much. <laughs> Dude, that is that is honestly the life. And like, honestly, these next two weeks are like, I mean, I'll be working, but it's just no one is in the office, right? Like, it's so slow right now. Yeah. Um, just, just because of the holidays. Um, let's see if we can minimize out of this. All right, still still going. I don't know if this if this continues to take a little bit longer. I might just might just fire up one of the other two. Oh, but, well, uh, I just keep talking. We can always keep talking. That's that's no problem. I didn't. You didn't. I, I found that like when I updated it to the latest like latest logic, it it takes like like so it takes so long to fire up projects now. Okay, I think it's finally going. Yeah, maybe it's also uh, yeah. You, we, normally, I can play in these times. I will play like some music in between, but we I don't have any track. You didn't send me any track, so I couldn't. I can't play anything in between. This is also, um, all right, let me, and hopefully my computer doesn't absolutely explode too. Um, I'm going to have to unfortunately close out, uh, close out Chrome to save my, my, uh, save out my, uh, CPU. So, yeah. All right. Oh, also I should share the zoom audio, right? I yeah. Do that yeah. Yeah. Well. I have to share with zoom audio and you can make uh, it stereo. Don't forget to make it stereo. So when you click oh on, wow so, they have that now they have that see yeah. I just used I think I told you I just used the uh, I just used the audio movers right so oh, yeah 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 you don't need that now you can just share uh, the quality is, is very good? compressed is but it, you know is it, it is, is it good or is it still kind of crap yeah you, you know it's very compressed obviously you know because it's not buffering anything it's so it's still like a, like a bad MP3 but you know it gets the job done it gets the job done um. All right, let me let me test to make sure that the audio is coming through. Okay. 
maybe you have to change your audio to Zoom audio device in uh, Logic. So the yeah, that might be, might be the helps. case. You're yeah. not getting anything? No. All right. Give me one second. Yeah, it's set to my UAD right now. There you go. Now we should be hearing it. Oh, what a... and it's going to have to reload all the plugins and stuff. Oh, By the way, I bought Suit. I remember you used that a lot back in the day. You just got it? it dude, I, it's funny. Like, I'm I not really it, using yeah. it as much anymore. I mean, okay. I am, but, like, it's kind of like I only use, like, like for example, if there's, like, a harsh, if there's, like, a residence or, like, I mean, if there's, like, a residence and call it, like, the 150, 350, like, the, like, low mid area. Then mm -hmm. I don't really, I don't really use suit. I'll just use like Pro Q and like take whatever. Like typically, it's one fifty if it's like a p low piano or like a low pad or something. Yeah, and it's like really boxy and taking a lot of space up. I'll just use Pro Q for that. Yeah. Um, for vocals, sometimes I use Soothe, but like even still, I'll just use like the dynamic EQ on the Pro Q. Like I'd rather get a little bit more surgical with it. But if it's just like one of those like high pitch like piercing sounds in like the one to three like like a dulcimer or like i don't know like any sort of like i don't know like like panty instrument then yeah. i will use uh i'll, I'll use suit a little bit yeah i love it man it's uh, like you I got su suit too right you got not, yeah not yeah the, suit too yeah. yeah 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 i use it mostly on i actually use it on the master to take away some it's like it's got this this preset on the mastering section take a uh, less mud on the master and i love it it's, it's very s subtle but it's it works really nice to take a little bit of, like low mid it, i think it takes out a little bit of low mid. you could use a pro q but i'm just lazy i think i really like the that setting and you know i've 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 um i've a bookmark i don't is, even know that setting yeah it's on the mastering section like less mud on the master and it's really it's just so subtle but it's you can really hear that it slightly brings out your kick a little bit more which is really nice and just that makes sounds it similar to kind of like uh gold Foss that i was telling you about this yeah plugin. Now that's yeah that's the one that's the next one i want but but you know my you know i got this whole studio i'm a sort it's of like so it's, money it's so <laughs> it's so expensive man yeah yeah um I'm just firing up the uh, the dive and live. Yeah, GoFus so is see. the next one on my uh, on my list as well. Like uh, my friend Yaron also bought it like a while ago. We tried both to use it both, but it's it's with the uh, with the uh, how do you call this dongle U of uh, what's this this annoying sort of activation thing. Uh, so so we couldn't use it together. So you know I still have to get it. I I maybe should get it like maybe for that could be my Christmas present. You know, <laughs> but I um, honestly, I, it's been so nice. I haven't felt like there ha like I like in probably a year or a year and a half. I haven't felt the need to buy um to buy plugins. Like I feel I feel as if I have kind of everything that I need. Yeah. Right. I'm although similar. although I did I did just upgrade. I mean it was a steal. I did just upgrade from uh Melodyne editor Melodyne five Melodyne yeah, Melodyne five editor to Melodyne five uh, studio. That's for vocals, um, right? It used to be for vocals. Yeah, I mean, pitch, yeah. pitch correction yeah. on vocals. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good. You know, I always think I'm done, but then at some point it's Black Friday and it, they lure me in. I had like I was really good. I said <laughs> in one SAE class, I said no, I'm not going to buy anything. The SAE class after, I said, okay, guys, I did buy a uh, suit. I bought like three things, <laughs> bought some waves, bought some suit and bought something. I was like, ah, they still got to me anyway. But you know, the suit one, I'm really happy. I bookmarked this um, this Andrew Wang um, uh, yeah, I know, video yeah. on, on side chaining with suit. So I have to check it out still, but I, I saw, uh, I quickly uh, went through it and it was really nice. So people, if you have suit and you want to side chain with suit, apparently it's really good because it's smart side chaining. Like the, what's this thing called? Uh, um, Shaperbox. The they just wave... announced Shaperbox three. I just I just grabbed that as well. Yeah, Shaperbox also, but the Wave Factory. The um... uh oh oh track spacer. You're talking track about spacer, track spacer. Yeah, man. I wonder that... if I have that on this on this track. I do actually. Uh, there you go. Yeah, I love so, that. So, yeah. Yeah. So so like I, it, it depends. I guess we could just kind of kick kick this off and jump right in. But yeah, like in terms of just like the kick bass relationship, I use either like track spacer um, to your point or like cable guys whichever one sounds better yeah I but so basically i have this sub sent to let me know if you're getting sound now hopefully you should be uh, yeah yeah yeah, there you go. yeah cool um yeah so i will um have this like routed to um routed to my kick basically in this case like my ghost kick so let me put these on and see yeah, and then you can kind of like choose the amount, which is like how that's the ratio, which is like how much you're ducking it, and it just 
it's so awesome because it takes like the waveform of your kick drum and then it side chains your bass line against that yeah. so and then you can like high cut it which i've done here and then obviously a, like a low cut um which i typically just leave alone because you want to get um create enough room in the low end obviously for yeah, your yeah, for your kick yeah. to cut through but so yeah I'll, I'll high cut typically as well because you don't need to um you know, you, you don't need to side chain it against the whole thing. It yeah, depends, otherwise it you depends. get whatever, whatever you want the bumpiness, good. then you you do the whole thing. If you don't want the bumpiness, you take the high cut, and it's only yeah, sort of ducking the low end, which you don't really hear. Yeah. The thing that's a pain in the ass, and I'm sure you know this as well. Like, so I have this like uh, I have this like ghost kick here, and you'll um you'll notice that like I have it here when I don't have like the filter kick at all, mm. which is like just like a, a a high pass kick drum like for you know breaks and like the intro and stuff, as you can kind of see over here but um one thing that's important to note which is a real pain with track spacer is that if you have like gaps if you like don't have a kick drum or your or your high pass kick or whatever you have to have kind of like these ghost kicks so that it triggers uh the midi against uh that same signal does that make yeah. sense yeah 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 of course otherwise you know because otherwise it'll just be like like the baseline would just be like whoa, whoa. it'll be like wubby you know and then suddenly got, yeah and then all of a sudden it's like yeah, yeah, you know yeah 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 yeah, it's good to have. I always have just a, re uh, a ghost kick. It's a copy of my kick drum, muted, and then sidechain everything to that from the get-go, you know? Yep, yep, yeah, exactly. But, like, yeah. uh, another thing, like, on the topic of... I don't have it here because there's obviously no vocals as well, but you actually have this, I think, in one of your um, Dive and Live tutorials is that sidechaining is not just necessarily used for your kick-bass relationship, but it's also, yeah. like... It's also used for, like, vocals, too. So, like, what I'll do is... Again, this track is not a good example, but like if you have your music bus, mm -hmm. you can you can throw like track spacer on your uh, on your music bus, for example. And if you have like vocals where you just want the vocals to breathe a little bit more, yeah, you do like a ratio of like I don't know, like seven to like thirteen percent, maybe like a little and then bit, low, yeah. like yeah. low cut up to like I don't know, like two hundred to three hundred hertz, and then high like do a um do a high cut down to like I don't know, maybe like three or four k, so that like there's just a little bit of ducking going on that your ear like can't really notice it, but the vocal like cuts through and doesn't get buried in the mix. Yeah. Um, it's very subtle. Yeah. That's the, yeah. It's, I've, I've, it's awesome. It's great because you know, the, the most of the synths and you know, it's actually like if you have a guitar, a song with guitars, if the vocals come in, it's the same range. So it's great. If you can't hear the vocal that, that, that clear, then it's a great way to have the vocal pop out just a little bit more, just to side chain your vocal to the other musical elements. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Maybe um, it's also cool to really pump that up, that the vocal pushes away everything in a break. It's like you can get some, maybe it's actually cool to make that pump as well. You never know. Could you just got to be really careful because it can come, it can come off as like really obvious if you push the ratio too much. Yeah, you want it, it sounds to be like maybe really, too EDM-y or something. The idea being with the low cut and the high cut is that like you're, you're only doing it in the space that the vocal takes up so you wouldn't be able to like tell the difference anyway since the vocal fills that space. Typically anywhere from like 400 hertz to like, you know, again, that like, three to uh three to four k yeah yeah wow we're so, going we're going really deep here i'm glad yeah 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 even yeah. <laughs> it's not even about this track too yeah um so yeah this track is named after me which is really cool I yeah maybe i can uh play it a little bit honored. like right into the first break yeah yeah play something yeah hope it works I've also taken off my master chain as well to save CPU. Yeah, now yeah, your master chain is usually pretty big, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pinkowitz, our boy, has a really good question. He was asking, um, he was asking how you write the melody of a track. Um, it depends track by track. Uh, I know, like the pentatonic scale, and you can look this up online somewhere. You can look at like the key that you're working in, and you can identify like the pentatonic scale for that key. And typically, those notes are like the best. Obviously, depending on your chord progression to write melodies with. Where is the melody in this one? God, this track's freaking old, man. I mean, we were working on this like 
so long ago. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's see where, and I'm so, this is so disordered. This is like not nearly how I would have my tracks organized nowadays. Yeah. I'm curious uh, to your new ones. Yeah, no, <laughs> we'll see that with love sparkles as well. Where is the melody in this thing? Uh, da, 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 da. I think it was just a sample. It might've just been a sample. No, not that. Ah, here we go. So I sampled this. So I took a sample and then I basically put it into quick sampler. And then I wrote, I like rewrote the notes because it just sounded a bit like um, dissonant with, with the rest of the, with the rest of the track. Um, so yeah, sometimes like, honestly, sometimes it's samples. Sometimes it's like MIDI effects, like Audio Modern has this one called River. I think you know that one, Camille. Um, mm -hmm. But honestly, like another like longstanding trick as well is just like, if you have all the elements of your track, like chord progression, like your melodic ambiences and whatnot, like just trying to like hum a melody over it, like that in parallel with using the pentatonic scale for the key that you're in is, is another good way to do it. But like, yeah, writing hooks is like good. Like anyone can write a hook, but like writing a memorable good hook is like so difficult. And I think another thing too, that I find myself doing like falling in the trap of is just overthinking it. Like, the tracks that come to me the most naturally and the smoothest are the ones that like everything's just flowing and I'm not like overthinking it. Like I will just jot down shotgun down on like 10 different channels, like 10 different hook ideas. And then um, I'll sleep on it for a couple of days and then I'll come back and pick the one that I'm, that I'm vibing to the most. Yeah, that's it, man. If you get a, if you get a good hook and not only with jujitsu, but also with music, <laughs> It's really important. It's really important that that it's you know, but you might have a really good hook, but then you're listening to it over and over again. You think, oh, it's not a good hook, you know. So it's also good to mute it sometimes, you know, the main thing, because at some point you're done with it because you work so much on the track. But it might have been just a really good Dude, hook. Dude, and your ear gets fatigued too. Yeah. So you like don't you start to get like get into this vicious cycle of like not. That's why it's like so important. I used to not do this as much. I think you know this, but like taking breaks like even just like a week away from the song yeah like a week or even just like a couple nights rest so that way you can like come back to it with fresh ears and be like wow like what the hell is i thinking that sounds terrible yeah like, you know yeah, um, yeah I, I sometimes just have everything play and then i then i go all out on my keyboard and i oh the night i'm like oh it's so great next day i wake up i go back and be like what I, but the night yeah, before, yeah. I thought it was like yeah, the best yeah. thing ever written, you know. But you know, but that's you're trying, and I think you know at some point, you know, the the you know, like uh, like big hits are just they come out at some point, you know, it, once in a lifetime or twice in a lifetime, you get this special one, you know. So I think it's just a matter of just keep making music a lot. You can and, even you can even you know? see too, like if you look at the channels, like I sent this initially to Tom, I think like during COVID, I think I sent it to him. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to think like when I fit, I finished this, I think I finished the initial version of this. Like, I want to say like November of 2020. Does that sound like November, December yeah. of 2020, yeah. like yeah. during the second wave or whatever. And I sent this to Tom and he like loved it, but then he was just like ripping the hook apart. And that's kind of why you can see like Marsh feedback hooks. So like I had the initial demo done. He didn't like the hook. I like went back to it, you know, like sent it over to him again. And he was like, yeah, it's just slightly better, but I'm still like, it's good having him. It's good having him as a uh, as somebody I can rely on for feedback. Because like yeah. the, the the most brutal brutal feed piece of feedback that um he tends to focus on is 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 hooks. So uh, yeah. and he he obviously writes writes good ones. So yeah, it's nice. It's good to have like a, a crew of people that you can send your music to and you get some some proper feedback that you can work with. You know, but um you know it's it's also it's still an opinion of somebody. You know, uh, uh, but you know it's always. I think really. Oh, there are tunes that I write that I like love that are kind of of like the like deep progressive, like kind of they're like club tools. Right. And like they're not meant to be like songs, essentially. Right. They're they're yeah. club, they're tunes that are meant to be played at like 3 a.m. On a, on a dark dance floor. Right. And so like those tracks like don't necessarily need a hook. They're like there to sort of like fill in the space between one track and another, right? So yeah, yeah. I don't think it, it depends like why you're writing and what the purpose is of, of the project that you're working on. But like, yeah, like for example, no songs, like if I put a hook on them, like a really musical hook, then that, that might take away from the uh, the drive, like, like how driving the track is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is why you, you see this as well with like bass lines, like, 
a lot of these progressive songs like have maybe like the root note of a bass line and maybe go they go down to like the minor seventh or they go up to the third or the fifth but like there there's no like full-blown like big chord progression that they're following right and the mm. reason is is because they want to keep the song like moving forward and driving and then yeah. as soon as you make something musical it kind of makes it i think more, it's hard to do yeah. that it, it yeah. kind of it, it's hard to do that um yeah yeah it makes it more it into like, a song than a dance to you know as soon as you have four chords going on it 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 takes that track directly into a different direction and if it's only had two uh two chords and then just a driving bass on on the bottom of it you know so it's it's different it, it's i think it's harder having a, a track with multiple chords like a bigger chord pro progression to have that be really driving and full because it's you know it's it's all these emotions and stuff <laughs> and i think I, I think like i used to be under the impression of like oh like you should just like flow with it like go with the flow and have an i like not necessarily like let the project kind of take you away and just continue writing and get into that flow state but i do think it is helpful to kind of have a vision for like where you want your project to go i actually like just started something the other day like the other day that's like really musical and it's like 121 bpm um, but if I were to do that at like 124 BPM, not that I'm, that I'm saying you can't change the BPMs of projects once you're done with them. I've done that. It can be a bit of a pain in the ass, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's good to kind of have an idea of, or a vision of like where you want the track to go. So that, so that like one, you're, you're writing in the right BPM, not necessarily yeah. saying that like BPM matters, but like, it, dude, honestly, it kind of does like when you're DJing, right. Um, some songs, like I don't necessarily like even get to play because they're so musical but they're so fast like i've got one at like 124 that's like a, a very deep chill organic house tune that i still haven't played in my sets i love it but it's just so fast and then i have other tunes that are like really hitting like really driving that are like 118 like 119 yeah. that are that are hard to um especially if you're coming in after after an opening artist it's hard to like come in at that right yeah. so yeah, it depends um, on how the if you have a lot of sixteen notes and it's a uh, you know the 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 bass is very driving, also short notes, and you've got like a very driving you know it could be slow but still like have a lot of energy. Yeah, I recently made it a song like a bit of like UK rave kind of breakbeat track, and there was one student here recently. He said, "Why don't you? It's like one twenty four. It's a bit slow for UK rave. Why don't you put it one thirty? And I put one thirty two, and it was like wow. It's, but you're so used to it sounding slow then that you then have to get used to the new vibe but now when i put it on and it's at 132 i'm like oh yeah Actually, yeah i did i did better. that was another that was another piece of feedback for one of my recent demos that um that like one of my friends had is uh is is like you know they're playing out and they like wanted to play it but they wanted it to be a bit fast it was like 121 and they asked for it to be at 120 it's just a, it, i don't know how it is in ableton but it's a bit of a pain in the ass you have to like you know, you have to flex everything and then you have to make sure it's in the right flex setting. Oh, yeah, and then yeah, from no. there you can, ch it, it's, it's just, yeah. I mean, it's fine, but it's just a pain in the ass. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> to to, change, to change the BPM of a project, like once yeah. it's done, you know? Yeah. Yeah. In Ableton, you can just change the BPM and you're fine. You can yeah, no, you have to make yeah. sure that flex yeah. flex time is uh, flex time is on and logic. Oh uh, yeah, of course, because uh, yeah, but then, you know, I think it should be possible there. Yeah. It's just maybe a little bit of a uh, more, Everything is more difficult in logic. <laughs> I'm not sure, but you know, uh, uh, it, it's different. <laughs> maybe it's not logic. <laughs> it, yeah, I it, yeah maybe maybe it there's probably be a better logic. more there, there's probably a more efficient way of doing stuff, but um, but that's that's kind of like I always do make sure it's done that way so that everything is like flexed properly and it works fine. I think it should. Um, yeah, of course. Maybe there's because you you essentially have to deal with what with war, warping. You know, I'm familiar with the warping of Ableton, obviously. So if if something is not warped yet, yeah, then you can change your your BPM. But then it's so you in Ableton, it only works if everything's warped. So maybe flexing is the same as warping. It's the same. It's the same. It's yeah. the same. Yeah, it's yeah. the same exactly. Um, and then for me, like another interesting topic of conversation for this track is like personally for me. I think you feel a fit, feel a bit differently if you're going to swing something. Generally, I like to have everything swung so it sounds yeah. cohesive. Yeah, otherwise because if there's something, if there's some things that are straight and like other things yeah. that are swung, like you'll notice that like <laughs> enamor shakers, like these for example, these are swung to C, and I think these are MIDI as well, which are also swung. Like everything here is swung to yeah C. Is it? Let me see. I don't know why. Yeah, see, this is swung. I'm not sure. It should yeah. be swung to C. Yeah, otherwise. once you swing, you have to swing everything. Otherwise, it's uh, once you swing, you have to swing everything. <laughs> I've got these new quotes recently. When in doubt, fade it out. 
You don't know where to begin? Fade it in. Yeah, <laughs> swing, yeah. Swing, swing everything. <laughs> that's nice. We're gonna make like a. And then we talked. We talked about quanta too. I need to start using this again. But basically, like taking a sample. Like this is granular synthesis. Like we yeah. talked about this yeah, before. Yeah, you could I, like drag in an audio yeah. sample where, like, I think I have like some sort of like splice sample here. Like yeah. here's the here's the grains. You make sure the uh, the oscillator is like off. And then you pick like what you want to hear, and then you identify like what the length is, the amount of grains that you have. Quanta. Pretty, pretty sick. Yeah. Yeah, I use Grain Scanner for Ableton, which is really nice. But you can. I need get to. I need cool to get sounds. into this more. I don't. I don't use it as much anymore. I'm, I've gotten lazy, I guess. Yeah. The cool thing about about granular synths is you get like super interesting results because you don't know all the time what you're doing with synthesis. You know, if you do normal subtractive synthesis, it might be a bit easier. But the thing I love about granular is that you it can take you in a whole new direction just by moving one button. You're like, oh hey, and then you lost your uh, <laughs> you lost your patch. But you know, it's really nice to give some some happy accidents. To, that's what I like about Granular. But this Quanta thing is that like, um, uh, is that a plugin or is it in built in? It's in? it's a yeah, it's a plugin. It's a, I I think I actually have to update it. In fact, yeah, um, it's by Audio Damage, I believe. Audio Damage. Yeah. So um, yeah, let's see. Like, I wonder if I wonder if I still even let me see. <laughs> <laughs> ben Pierre right. says, if in Fruity Loops, it has to be done with each individual track. No, I'm not converting to Ableton. <laughs> yeah, you know ben Pierre, right yeah, yeah. Oh, that poor poor guy still stuck on the uh, still stuck on the on the uh, on the FL ground. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. I've seen, I've had more um, more artists here that are in FL. It's it's you know, it's nice. Is it getting is it getting better? You know, the, the thing about Fruity Loops, it has the best uh, the best um, MIDI. Um, the, the clip editor, right? Or the MIDI thing. The MIDI, how do you call this? Uh, I'm bad with... Uh, where's all MIDI, MIDI editor? What, what do yeah, you mean? Yeah, MIDI editor. So when you put like MIDI notes and stuff, it has the best one. You can choose chords and it will, you click one time, you can put like a full minus seven chord and you can select what chord you want. You can't do this in Ableton. And I've been asking for this, uh, but you know, it's a, probably a lot of programming work, uh, but you know, it's, it's huh. really nice to, to have... To have like to say, okay, I want to make seventh chords, and you just click on the C and it builds. Whoa, whoa. Okay. <laughs> I have to, I have to, tur I have to turn like the, uh, yeah. the oscillator off. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Nice. So yeah, give us a little. So where's the? Yeah, it's nice. You have the little grains. It can make them forward and backwards. You can also put vocals yep. in there. I love putting vocals in there, man, and make it like stutter, and it goes back and forward. And you probably can also reverse. Yep, yep. Where is a? Uh... Ooh, see, like that, 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 that in itself is already a mood. And then you could like throw some reverb on it, and then. Like that's like already. That's a nice vibe. See what I mean? Like even that, like it, like I was just like fidgeting around, and I got already got something like pretty pretty interesting. Yeah, like let's try reverse to your point. Yeah. Or random. Yeah, and it works really nice on vocals if you want to get like some really gracey vocal. Uh... Frank, did I make a tutorial yep. about this? I'm yep. not sure if I make a made a tutorial about it. But yeah, if you get these grains, some to reverse and it goes back and forth. If you if you have like a sentence, then it will sort of like when it's scanning through the through the through the the, the wave file of the, the sample and it gets all these little grains, you get it's actually saying the vocal, but then in like slices. And it's really cool if you have multiple grains and you go left and right and reverse, you get super yeah, spacey effect. Yeah, and then it's you can like, use like effect yeah. rack too to like just yeah. screw around with it. Like, I wonder like what choruses they have. Like this. Uh, Do you use a lot motion. of this effect rack? Do you use guitar rig as well? I use guitar rig the same way, sort of like a sound. No, yeah, I'm just ideas. use effect rack. I still have to freaking update to. Uh, I have to update the tantric too. Is it worth it? Uh, yeah, definitely. It tantra is always worth it. It's, it, it piano it, roll. To... That's it. Ah, it's piano roll. I forgot the. <laughs> Got the word, yeah, man. Tantra two is is it's uh yeah, it's just upgrade, man. It's so nice. It's got dice now everywhere, so you can change. You can just press a dice, and it will change the 
change the setting for either the LFO or for either for either one setting of, of like the saturator or the, the I setting. You, of I the think, delay. but I think I have to buy. Like, how much is it? Because I, I think you gave me uh, a cracked version. <laughs> it, <laughs> it, it was uh, it was twenty nine recently, but it's you know she so should wait for the for the for the deal on Plugin Alliance. They they do twenty. Oh, they bucks. do deals all. I'm sure they're gonna do one for Christmas too. Yeah, right? wait until it's twenty nine bucks and you got a cheap man. It's nice. Okay. And uh, yeah, I guess I would just get that. And then that would supersede. Um, or I guess, yeah, I would, that's something I would have to, would I still, I would still have access to the uh, original version, I would imagine, right? I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't see, I don't see why, why I wouldn't, because I have, you know, I have so much stuff that has that on it, you know? Yeah. But yeah, this uh, is pretty really cool. Like Yeah, the Batman is nice, and the Tremolators are nice also to get some more stuttering stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that's granular synthesis for you in a nutshell. Yeah. Um, pretty sweet. You can get some like interesting results with it. Hey, and maybe well, I'm, I'm curious to uh, to your last, uh, one of the last projects that you've uh, that you've made. Maybe the, the All Day I Dream one, or you know, just... Um, yep, yep. I can fire that one up. Actually, before we jump to that, one thing that I really like about this one, let me see, is this uh, this uh, vocal sample. This is actually me talking, and it's just got a bunch. It's got like pitch shifting on. Yeah. What? So you were talking about something you couldn't do. And then there's some delay tail at the end to like take it into the first bit. And how did you record it? What what was the setting? Uh, the setting? Oh, that was just something on my phone. Um, it's like yeah. a voice note or something. Like a a voice like a voice memo. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. So, yeah. it's a very personal um, thing, probably. You know, so it's nice to incorporate that in your music. Yeah, it's just a good way to make your uh, make your make your track make your track unique, right? So yeah. Yeah, just put uh, some stuff from yourself in there, you know. And also, you know, it's good to express stuff in music. I think that's what it's for, you know, so it's nice. Yeah, it's still the David Oren kick. I'm really curious to your new projects because we've I've seen so many of your, you know, the the projects back then when we were doing the Yeah, these are stuff. these are this is old. Yeah, let me see. And then maybe I can show you uh one of my IDs. Oh god, man. Look at all this crap. Uh, all this crap, man. It's uh, there's, there's, there's oh, no. lots of gold in there, my friend. Maybe I should not be sharing this, but whatever. Uh, is this it? I believe so. No, I want this one because it's on my local. Yeah, okay. Close. Don't, Don't save. save. Yeah, yeah, nice. Great. So yeah. Yeah, everyone. Everyone now just saw my friggin' library. Great. Oh well. <laughs> well, you know, it's the stuff you're working on. You mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah well, there's, I, a, there's a lot. There's a lot. Yeah, one of my ideas shows a list of 250 <laughs> this year alone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, dude. It. Honestly, unfortunately, I've not, uh, I've not worked like in the last like month or so. I haven't. I haven't worked on too much stuff because I've just been buried with pre-masters, dude. Um, yeah, like I have a three-track EP on Tail and Tone that's coming out in January. I had to work oh, on that. Tone. I had oh, like nice. a single on House Music of with Love that's coming out a week before that that I was working on. Um, obviously, we have Forgiveness that, that's coming out on February 3rd now. And then another uh, two-track EP with Radio Edits coming out uh, late February, early March. So it's just been... And then like ba and then like Bane and all the other like recent releases too. So I've just been like grinding on pre masters, man. I mean, which which is a good problem to have, but yeah. Um, but yeah. We, all right, yeah. let's see here. Moving at least. You know? so this is my track with Bonafide. Where is the kick drum? It this one was really actually well, right? a bit difficult because I got his kicks it was like all together in like one loop. Oh yeah. Like it was part of a loop, you know. I don't know why it's freezing, but give it a second. Nice. When does Not So Random come out? Pinkovich asks. 
Oh my God! Don't get me started on that one. Um, oh, he. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I initially signed it somewhere, and then uh, I think he actually knows the story. Like they just kind of like ghosted. Um, but uh, it, it's it's actually in good hands right now. I think they're they're hopefully going to bite on it. But yeah, that's like that one needs to come out. It's like it's like done and dusted. Like masters are done. Like it's ready to go. Um, it's just a matter of when, I guess. Yeah. But, all right, let's see. So you can still get audio, right? Yeah. Put the limiter on, turn all this stuff off. Yeah, so like, so I had to like, it was a bit difficult because I had to like mix the kick and like this hat loop together. Sounds tight though. And then, yeah, uh, Elements, I think it is, right? By Isotope. Is that the transient shaper? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a Neutron, a neutron. sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did it here, for example. Uh, neutron, you... producers out there, this thing, I need to use it more. But if you have a kick drum that is in part of a loop or something, instead of like sampling it, you could also just use Neutron where you can actually transient oh. shape by the band. Oh, Super powerful. That's Do you crazy. know about this? No, man. I use SPL transient. Dude, this is I'm... no. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so it's the same thing, but like I have it split at 450 hertz, yeah. and for this, like I'm shaping this band. Oh, like so, what I'm doing. So I'm not, I'm not doing anything over here for like 450 and above, yeah. but down here, like I'm lowering the sustain. Yeah, so like so, basically, like a, like, I'm lowering the sustain of the kick drum in the low end by negative yeah. eight. Yeah, yeah. Um, like a sort with of a sharp, with a sharp transition, design. but then way easier. Yeah, dude, wow. it's amazing. Like if, if, if there's like if there's like a loop that yeah. you have where like you really like the top end like you like the highs but maybe like there's some like bongos or some shit in there a couple things that you can do one you could convert it to a sampler track and then you can like adjust the transients as such and like manipulate the the envelope and the amplitude that way that's like how i used to do it or if you're just looking for a quick and dirty way to do it just slap on neutron by isotope and just like adjust the uh, adjust the bands from uh from from the transients accordingly. Yeah, that's what I Dude, love about powerful. Isotope. Isotope always. You didn't you didn't know you didn't know about band. this plugin? I didn't. Yeah, I have. I actually I have to admit I have the full elements bundle. <laughs> so I have this. But dude, that's is it? it. Uh, is it elements? I, is it part of? I can't remember. I think if it's it is. part of elements. Well, at least I have it. I bought. I, you know, I bought the whole bundle with um, with my friend Yaron together and and uh, Duncan. So we we have the the whole bundle. But there's so much in it. Actually, I've used Neutron more to like. There's this assistant in it, and I tried that once, and that's like the old, the whole Neutron I've ever done. And I was like, okay, you know, I I can set my own levels, but uh, I didn't know this. this I never used the. Um, effects inside of ozone i should do that i only use the imager from ozone i've been doing that for way too yeah long. i use i use I, it most i use it mostly for like mastering and stuff um like low on focus or like the ozone 9 like master reference we can like compare your spectrum compared to like a reference track or something like that but i, I honestly I use more metric a b and kind of eyeball it that way um yeah. Yeah, God, there's so many things that you can really talk about. Yeah, it's a um, nice tip. Yeah, I hear Ben Pierre says he's been using native slicer by the transients, using a native slicer by the transients, but it's messy and not always accurate and adjustable. This looks ace. Well, is is it is it a multi is it is it multi band? That's what. Uh, yeah, that's what this using, is. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure if it's multi band. Yeah. I wonder. Yeah, I wonder. If multi band that's, is that's... so crazy. It's like multi band compression, but made easy because you just have to sustain the attack, so you don't have to worry exactly, about exactly, ratio yeah, or whatever. Exactly, exactly, it's really yeah. nice to make only the kick a little bit tighter and leave the red. Otherwise, your your clap gets really short as well. And if you don't want that, then this is a great way to just take the low end only. It's awesome. Thanks for showing this, man. Amazing. Yeah, and then I think like another thing I've been doing as well as like adding fills and stuff and like saturating them together and putting them on the same like reverb sense so like they all sound like they're in the same space so i like this feel kind of ties it into the the, uh, the first verse nicely
another issue that I was having with this one when Bonafide sent me this little like bass stem, which is really, really catchy. Yeah. Uh, by Brainworks and Plugin Alliance. It's a Brainworks thing, right? BX, I think that's Brainworks. Um, yep, Brainworks. So there's also this plugin too. If you get like a stem or something like that, that just, if I bypass it, you'll notice it doesn't really have like, like it doesn't really have like many, like many sub frequencies, right? But yeah, like that's yeah. the baseline. So what I did is I like, I used this and then I drove like the sub harmonics up by 68%. And I really pushed like the 36 to 56 range to give it that like, mm -hmm, you know, nice. so you can um, tweak it also. Yeah, 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 it's nice. You can hear it, right? It's like, now it's a lot more present, but if I bypass it. Yeah. It gives it a little bit more body, like in the low end. It's nice. Yeah. It's, yeah. I use like R bass for this from waves. R, I love R bass and max bass from, uh, from waves for this type of saturation on low end. It's nice. Yep. Yep. And then another thing to keep in mind as well is like, it's really important to keep the progression of like the track going. So I try to like introduce percussive elements. Like it's really nice. When it first comes in at 49, um, you just have kind of most of the drums there, but then you have the hi-hat coming in to carry it along. Extra head layer, never bad. You know what I mean? You could get away with like one simple hook like this if you just yeah. make sure you're arranging it properly and don't I guess expose everything like all at once in the int in the intro, right? Like yeah, just you can get a lot more yeah. mileage with like more yeah. than you think. That's a problem that I was like having honestly in the last like year or two is like overfilling the tracks, stuff would get lost in the mix, and now I'm trying to strip stuff back and become a little bit more minimal. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah so the elements nice. have sometimes, more room to breathe. Sometimes bringing one hi hat in, like on top of the what you have, it just feels like oh hey we're going somewhere. Like the, it feels like the track's going into something new, a new energy, and then you you just gain another twenty seconds, thirty seconds to keep the track interesting. You're just using one hi hat, you know. It's it's a very smart move. Yeah. And another thing too that you can also do, I I don't know how you would do it in uh, um in Ableton as well, but you could also just like pull up a sample loop like uh like a drum sample loop that you really like like say there's like say there's like a uh a hat that you really like in in one specific loop let me go back to my samples here we'll go to um let's go to loops we will go to my percussion loops and then we'll go to vengeance which is really good and then these are really loud so maybe just turn down your uh your headphones a bit they're so pushed but let's see like that's a cool that's a cool little loop so let's go ahead and do this and then you can actually go to op original and quick sampler now what you have is like you have all the transients like sampled out for you on the piano roll yeah nice yeah like that's a nice hat right there yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I've been doing that a lot more as well. Yeah, it's because I find like yeah. hats and sample packs kind of suck. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's nice because the, you know in these loops they're always is sort of like pushed or or processed in a way that it's nice and it's sort of like gritty. Maybe sometimes I think that's saturated. what it is. A lot of like house producers do the same thing. They like like the the straight up house stuff is all sample based. It's all like reusing old school loops. You know, like sampling something from vinyl, slicing it up and making sort of like a new beat with it, which is probably quite similar to to you know if you're in house it's more yeah you got these these um how do you call it Con conventions that you know you make something very swingy and you use some of these very nasty hi-hats and it's the same thing you just slice something from a loop and you already have that sound basically you're already close to what you're what you're after yeah this works yep. exactly and same, another yeah. thing too like to keep in mind like as opposed to using risers which i still do i wonder if i have it on this but using like uh, I think I do like super massive and like other like effects on like your drums to like create some sort of like white noise, like that sounds organic because they're like processed on the drums. So like listen, hear it? There yeah. it goes. The the mix is going up, up, and up. It's like sounds organic, right? Yeah. Versus like just, I mean, I have it in parallel with yeah. uh, this riser. I still yeah. use risers, don't get me wrong, but I think yeah. it's good to not rely solely on them for uh, for impact and effects and stuff.
Do you use resampling a lot that you are, uh, the, let's say you put like a super long reverb on, on just one hit in your track? It could be. A, yeah. Could be. Yeah. I re- use reverse. chroma verb for that. Like if I have like a piano and I want to like build the piano, because it, it can be like a bit jarring if you have like, um, I don't think in these tracks I have it, but uh, yeah, like, like, vo- like vocals too. I'll do that. Like that's yeah. a really good way to, um, if people are stuck and there's like a vocal that kind of comes in out of nowhere, taking like the root note of that vocal, putting a crap, like bouncing it in place adding a crap ton of reverb on it, on, on it, like freezing it maybe, and then bouncing like an eight bar section of that like root note. <laughs> this is a bit complicated, I guess. Complicated than I thought. Reversing it and then putting reverb back on that. So yeah, resampling basically. Yeah, yeah, just recording um, like a super long tail of one of your sounds. Yeah. Could be a stab, could be a clap, could be anything, yep. and then reversing that because that's also pretty organic. You know, you're reusing yep. stuff that's already in the track. So it doesn't really feel like you're overloading the whole project with new sounds, but you're just creating sounds from what you already have. I think that's a really good. I always compare it to when you, let's say, you're making some food and you bake a steak, but then you use that gravy from the steak for some other stuff you know for over the potatoes whatever so they yeah all, you, you like glue everything together with that stuff it's sort of like similar to get to get sort of like the same yeah or you're like or track. like an analogy too for like vocal tracks like if you're like at a steak if if you're like at a steak dinner and you ordered like starters or appetizers or a salad or something like that sometimes like if a vocal just comes in in the first break or out of nowhere without any sort of like transition be it a reverse vocal or something else that like like leads into it nicely it's like having your like your steak before you even have your salads or your appetizers yeah. right away right yeah um, little little <laughs> teaser that already introduces something that's coming so you know it's just if you, the analogy with like food is really handy to to like see the the same the same thing you know and it's with music as well if, if you were stuck find something you can reuse you know like or reverse or whatever record something or pull it through tantra or put it to some other effects unit and see if you can use that as a new element for maybe the last bit of the track or maybe for the intro you know it's really sometimes i get the most crazy ideas from just fooling around just adding loads of effects on something you're like oh whoa this is actually nice let me record this and just put this somewhere in the track where i need an element you know and then and just because it's something that you already had it feels way more natural to have that element come in than another new element that you just find from a preset or whatnot you know it's it's uh, really nice yeah i've gotten lazy i need to do that more i need to i need to do that more but i am trying to do less at the same time too so it's like yeah. it's well it's good that we have these sessions because i think these sessions keep us um uh inspired you know you be just talking about it makes oh like oh yeah i can try this next time oh, i need to i need to look at my this. trick I'm list a- actually like let me see yeah. uh let me um yeah did you add some new stuff to the trick list the classic uh the classic thing that i told so many people about the trick trick list man it's so nice it's like a nice little if you're stuck just go over your trick list you know? uh, but the new thing see. i have a new thing right so i'm doing this 30 day consistency the consistency challenge mr pinkovich is in there as well because he's in my lessons in life dojo and he uh and so what we do we we make a track every day right so you, or at least a track every day you, you know you not make a track every day but you sometimes you make a loop and i get lots of things so the the trick list is very handy but i also made a concept list so a concept make a track with one synth or only use samples or use only one kick you know and to cr- create like a concept for yourself to work on so if you're uninspired just find one of the concepts and just say okay i can only use eight tracks and have to make a full one you know ah you get the abbey road one i see the abbey road one you told me you told me about that one yeah I think. yeah it's nice it's a good uh good little course yeah, I need to, I need to look at this stuff more, man. I've been I've been I've been really lazy lazy in some of my recent stuff. But my music but my music, like the tracks all like sound different. So that's you know That's, that's good. good. Yeah. So you don't get like the same uh, formula. Yeah, sometimes also great to change up the whole thing or start with it. It could be a concept. Start with an empty empty um project, you know. Oh, you know what I've also been doing, you'll be really you'll be really proud of me as I started like I'm doing it in all my tracks now, is uh, like programming my own drums. Like oh, not nice. just using loops. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, it's so e- it's so fun and it's so easy and like it's such a good way to like add groove. Like on the sixteenth, like an offbeat sixteenth, it's like little yeah. ear candy that kind of like keeps the track like driving and and moving. Like it sounds like it's moving faster than it really is, right? It's a little um, work, but you know, once you get it, it, get, it is it is yeah. a little bit of work. But it, once it you have be, it. You're but it's more fun work. Control. I don't know. Yeah, and it's you're more in control because once you make your own grooves more, you know, and it's just having. I have like these new th- this new thing with I have these these um uh drum racks 
filled with all kinds of weird percussion. And I just go to one of the channels, I just start hammering on the keyboard, and sometimes you, pew, pew, you get this little glitch or, or a little bleep or blop, whatever, and you just add that in. And then you do that a few times with a few channels, and suddenly you have a really full loop with lots of stuff going on, which is all like sort of swung, and you know, you create your own top loop, basically, you know, which is nice. Exactly. And it fits like it fits in the same it, like in the same realm of the track, too. Yeah. Um, but and know. I think also like this, like the last thing I'll say about this is like arrangement, too. So like going into like, the final push. I like brought the gain of the master down a little bit. got a compressor for you by the way on like speaking of drums and compression and whatnot the Ooh. spl iron by uh plugin alliance wow so good so good on drums yeah um wow it's just like yeah. two channels it could do mono or dual whatever yeah i don't really screw with the settings that much i really just touch the threshold and i have it linked yeah, um, yeah but yeah. yeah maybe you could change like the uh like the algorithm up here too interesting but, yeah, yeah. It yeah. looks a bit like the Eliza in a way, the way it's set up, the Eliza uh, compressors. Yeah, it, I definitely need to like screw around with the, um, you know, so, kind of like the, uh, like I wonder. always like uh, silicon seems silicon, to do the most yeah, sil also, silicon uh, silicon seems to be the, the nicest hey, yeah, yeah hey, and, yep. and in terms of the the whole harmony right you have you always have a lot of layers and i find it very intriguing how how everything sounds still sounds so open and um you, you're you know you're, you're everything's punchy it sounds really you're well not even listening to this stuff which was in the like the original demo um like all of these like different let's see Oh yeah. Wow. I kinda wish we kept the kept this one in there, but that's nice. Anyway, sorry, what was your question? So yeah, like how do you get everything to sit well? What is your uh, your trick for, uh, for having secret. so many harmonies uh, going on? And then do you pan a little stuff, you know? So yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, great question. Uh, it's a mixture. A lot of it has to do with like compression and levels and stuff, and like EQing. It's a mixture of like I forget where I saw this, but it's like uh, there's like kind of the mix tutorial about like uh, probably no, I'm not really a production teacher, so I should really know this stuff. <laughs> uh, oh. Like in terms of mixing, there's like the levels, and then there's like the space, right? So uh you can think about like levels in terms of like how loud each channel is and like compression sort of like helps with that but then they also the other aspect about it is like uh your 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 width and your and your space and your course right so like yeah. for example guitars or uh like atmospheres like drones and stuff like that that are kind of like in the background i will chorus them or i'll tremolo i'll like put them in tremolo so that way like the stuff that's more prevalent like your hooks your leads stuff like that is more center and more uh like in the center of your of your mix so to speak yeah yeah um so i'm trying I'm, i wonder if there is like uh so you make everything else more like atmospheres and that's not like it needs to be in front you chorus that you make that a little bit lush and wide sort yeah of. like yeah yeah like these are really wide because they're like not the main same with this They're really wide so that like the bass line and the main hook can like still breathe, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everything that's that needs to be really up front could be loud in the middle of the mix, basically. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And then compression too. I swear by this Pro Audio DSP by Plugin Alliance. It's uh, kind of like a, you have like a pick noise reference over here and you can actually, I should probably do this as well, but you could take like other tracks and load them in here through the, um, I think through this uh, this like save button. Yeah, and uh, you, I usually I usually just use the uh, the ping functionality because it just it just sounds really good. Um, but yeah, so you can go ahead and like reference this against like a pink noise. So it's kind of like a visual compressor. So if I 
go ahead and solo the music bus. And so basically, however much the yellow line is passing the white line is how much you're compressing it. So obviously, obviously, like that has a lot to do with your threshold. So the more you lower threshold, the So now that's like really compressed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then that nothing's happening here. Yeah. You're looking for the sweet spot there. And then looking at like your your gain is obviously your makeup gain, and then ratio attack release, like all that stuff. Like knee is just the standard standard stuff you would see on a regular compressor. It's just like visual. It's like it's nice to nicely see. Nicely visually like made made interesting and nice. It sounds so good on music, man. Like if it's stuff to sound, if stuff starts to sound cluttered, it like. Just a little bit of compression, maybe like, I don't know, maybe like three to four dB of gain reduction, like visually looking at this just puts everything in its place. Yeah, nice. Like a little glue, basically, but then very visualized. Nice. The Brainworks Pro Audio DSP DSM V3. Wow, that's uh, the one who comes up with these names there. Brainworks, uh, really Brainworks, nice. Brainworks, everything Brainworks has is so good, man. So good. I used to use it way more in the past, but then I was still using crack. So, you know, I'm, I haven't <laughs> used it for a long time, actually, all the brain works. I, I did have this bundle with the Plugin Alliance, but I canceled it and I just bought a few that I really like. Oh, I, do I have think the... you were telling me, is that, that's like, it, it, yeah, it's like you have to, like, you subscribe, you like, but yeah. you, don't you have to like use it on the cloud or something? Yeah, but then you get like this That's voucher. Annoying. You can buy some, and I bought a few, but they didn't work. And then I I got into a fight with them on email, and then I canceled. And now I reinstalled my computer, got a new uh, operating system. And now suddenly those plugins do work, and I have one which is the uh, <laughs> SSL from uh, Brainworks. That one's pretty nice. They have an SSL. Oh yeah, the SSL. Thing. I have that yeah. too. I I don't even like the the console. I don't even really like do anything with it. I yeah. just slap it on, and it just it just sounds like. Yeah, I buy so good. I share it with Yarol, and he uses this a lot. Actually, it's nice, nice EQ though. Adds a lot of warmth. Yeah, yeah, it's a good EQ on there. So it's, a, it's, for... it's an SSL, like it emulates like an SSL, like the yeah. So if I'm looking for EQ, then I for like a special EQ for the highs or, or the lows or sometimes the mids on vocals, then it's nice to use this uh, this, um, this 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 SSL. But then also I got recently got the UAD Spark because it was 19 cents for three months. And I don't want to get hooked to it because it's going to be twenty bucks per month, <laughs> and it's uh, <laughs> and it has really nice EQ. There's this what's his name with the EQ? I can't can't think of the name of the EQ. I know where it is on my Ableton, but it's it's a really nice nice top end EQ. So you know it's but you know I also like the waves. It's it's also nice to use. It's find some. I don't want to get more stuff. So when this runs out, I'm also using the. Um, the uh the com uh, api so compression. what happens if you, if you don't so if you don't renew your subscription yeah then you wouldn't have then, to yeah to you them. can't buy them separately you can't buy the uad spark plugins like separately because otherwise i would have bought them like if it's like 100 bucks for this compressor that i'm constantly using now i'd rather buy that it sucks. and then cancel the subscription but you know therefore i'm just using it now for three months and then i'm, I'm i probably have to go back to my waves but waves is good too man i recently was here with my friend tripping jaguar he was in valencia and he uses a lot of waves he's a very big fan of the CLA, uh, the CLA drums and the CLA vocals. So that's a good bundle as well. And you can now get it for 29 bucks again. You know, they're on sale. CLA, like. but why have I heard that before? Yeah, the CLA, the Chris Lorge, what's his name? And it's like there's a whole uh, wave bundle. The CLA, yeah, you get them all, man. Like he's like, I, I, yeah, I think I got these. Yeah, crap, and they're just, like, a, but you don't even know what's under the hood. But it's just. Oh yeah, yeah, I, these I, I, guys. Yeah, I know. I, I've used this before. They're, I think. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Should, yeah, it sounds good. Yeah, yeah. it's 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 kind of interesting. I definitely I definitely remember using this. Um, yeah, maybe it's worth. But yeah, I I, I just use the UAD stuff. I use the. Uh, the uh, LA two A into uh, the Teletronics for for my oh, yeah. vocals. So yeah. like the two. Those yeah. are like two really good the vocal classic, the iconic yeah. uh, compressors. But you know this, like you also have the CLA drum. So if you need a little change, you can sometimes see like. Dude, hey, I might try. I might try that. So oh, yeah. wait, I'm I'm curious. Uh, yeah, because Tripping Jaguar, he swears by. It. He sent me a new track that he made when he was here. He wanted to get out, and and he made it. Made some tracks, and then. It, it sounded so wide and you know and he just uses all these cla stuff he said man it's just the only thing i need because it's and you don't really know what it does but it's really uh really good i wonder let's see it's hard hard to really tell i guess let's see 
Yeah, this yeah, no, I can't, I can't really tell what it's, what, there, it's, yeah. what it's doing. Honestly. Yeah, check it out, man. There's, a, a, they're cool. You have them anyway. But yeah, I think you're. I think it's the Zoom audio or something. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have a look. I'll, I'll play around with it. Yeah, um, you have enough plugins for now. That I think you know. If you don't, if you haven't used these, so if you need a switch, you can just. Switch I use I use sausage fattener on my drums too recently a lot, quite oh, a yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still decapitating everything. Oh, you are. Yeah, yeah, I like the sound toys. Uh, that's the bundle I bought. What uh, year. like on your drum bus? Like how much? But you're not doing it like that much, right? Just, just no, like a just a bit. little bit, like two or three. I think it's on the drives on two or three individual or three? stuff. Okay. Like like on the clap, for instance, I would like really f like like uh, decapitate the shit out of it because you know if I want to have like a super dis like sort of distorted clap, which is really nice, to just bring that in. That, that's really really nice to to use. As well. Uh, Pinkowitz says you can get the equivalent spark plugin if you buy the UAD hardware version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I know. So then yeah, I know they. I had like a UAD card like about 12 years ago, like one of these uh, early um, Firewire cards, but I gave it to Yaron and then uh, he's not using it anymore. And by the way, Firewire has been sort of getting more and more obsolete. So I also gave my plugins to, the, to Duncan and Yaron and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not UADing at the moment. I'm looking for a new uh, uh, sound card, but it's it's a Tuscom desk, like the Model 24, so I can hook up my hardware all into into the computer as well. So I'm yeah. not going UAD anytime soon, but you know, uh, yeah, I'll just stick to Waves. <laughs> ben, Ben's hey. asking if you're using stock plugins in uh, in uh, in Ableton. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, I, like I still use the saturator a lot. That's the um, the echo I use a lot. The chorus I use a lot. I actually prefer auto pan a lot above pan man. I don't know. I, maybe I should just get more into pan man from a sound toys. But I I seem to go a lot to stock plugins. Also, the glue compressor is really nice because you know they're fast and they do the job as well. Um, than just getting all these fancy things. But lately, I've been using this API for glue compression. So the, the 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 Ableton one is uh, is is not being used at the moment, but there's you know there, they also have the, the the resonator as well. The resonator is really nice. I use the vocoder a lot to put a vocoder, for instance, on a snare, and then side chain it with like one of the pads in the track, which is really really nice to do. Just any drum uh, and make a drum rhythm, whatever, and then put the vocoder on and side chain it to your pads, and then suddenly the the, the drums have like this sort of like. Uh, uh, same quality as your your pads and the same tonality, which is really nice. And the spectral resonator is something you want to check out. That really works well. Spectral resonator is such a cool thing. I've there's this yeah, it's in Dutch. There's this Dutch um, uh, able to certify training uh, trainer uh, um, YouTube channel and um, uh, Michel Infante, who also plays as Love Over Entropy. He uh, he made a really really good tutorial about spectral uh, resonator. I need to I need to dive more into it. I'm going to be home with Christmas three days and don't have any obligation so i'll probably be three days into the studio and turn my phone off while everybody's celebrating christmas i'll just be in the studio for three days i can't wait <laughs> it's nice. yeah i'm definitely gonna be i'm definitely gonna be writing a lot myself um so you need you need that sort of sanity break from the from the family a bit yeah just but recently like, <laughs> like therefore i canceled all my my sort of like uh travels because i'm like you know I'm, i've got the studio now why should i go man i can just sit here make music help people with lessons and do tutorials whatever i'm happy man i don't need to travel half the world to you know i'm happy here now <laughs> so it's good got my own place you know no need to to move and i think that's something also you know for people listening if you want to if you if you have serious plans on becoming a musician you know this takes time and the more time you it invest takes in so it, much time and you can't shortcut it man no but but therefore you got to make some choices so what's wrong with taking six months or, or a year of your life and setting up the circumstances in a way that you can focus on music and if you actually force yourself to do it and and stop watching excessive um, uh, uh, social media or net Netflix, whatever and if you cut all that out and you focus and you just sit down and grind and and do something every you learn so much and the better the best thing is the more you do it the better it goes the faster it goes at some point you you're getting way faster you're getting way create way more creative yeah i'm actually like not producing as much these like these days but i'm like still writing as much output if not more because i'm just getting faster yeah yeah you know but that's that's it if, and also if i don't do it for a while i i, I notice that when i get in, back into it i have to get back into it you know yeah and i do get I, get I get rusty myself as well yeah but you, therefore you know if you keep it even if it's like 15 minutes a day or three just 
turn on the machines, make a little jam, or, or just open up your DOM, make a little jam, and maybe nothing comes out, but you just had fun exploring a new synth or whatnot, and it all it all accumulates. And after like a year of just grinding every day or as much as you can, you'll definitely see results. But it's so hard to realize that at the moment that you have to like cancel plans or you know, I'm 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 trying to not do a lot the the coming period just to to focus on on you know, honing the craft man <laughs> yeah know? yeah yeah i think what says that he brought hey, his, studio to his to his parents place oh yeah i saw Christmas. his mobile studio it had super nice he just brought the essentials so he could uh could make <laughs> yeah. music you can make a little christmas uh team for your uh for your for your family why not <laughs> hey yeah. nadia you should come on since you're in europe now you should come on sometimes that is in yeah, Berlin. Yeah, yeah. I want right, so to make sure. I want to make sure. I want to make sure I cover this a little bit because I, I do have a I do have, oh, a, flight have a flight here yeah. in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. But here's one of my IDs, and I want to talk first about uh, the drum machine designer stuff, like the drum rack stuff. So mm -hmm. let's solo this. Just random sounds, right? Like. Wow. Right? Like it's how is he? I like it. Oh, it's so different. I love this part. I played this in uh, Amsterdam actually. Love this part. A Korg, Korg, uh, Korg organ M1, too, baby. M1. It's going housey. How cool. Yeah. Dude, I'm, I'm telling you, like, the stuff I'm making lately is, like, a lot housier. I like it. It's like, also stuff, very dubby. Yeah. yeah. I don't even think I used a rise here. Again, I think I just used and the smile. Oh yeah, I love this one. Love this fill though. Cool. See what I mean? It's so cool. I'm really excited hearing this, man. It's, it's <laughs> I like I like the the difference in the sound because it's way different than what what you normally made before, you know. So uh, I remember this was a team uh, that we did once. It's like make something totally like something. Do a breakbeat, but you still do you still do you like breakbeats nowadays or still not? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I make I have made a lot of crazy breakbeat stuff lately, <laughs> but I love breakbeat. That's cool. Right. This is this is refreshing, man. I think this is really nice. To, uh, to yeah, and also like the dubby vibes and the chords. It's more like the the seven chords, right? Going a bit more jazzy. Nice, I like it. Yeah, really. And cool. don't be afraid to use like sample like sample loops to uh, you know to like get inspiration. So I think like this like melody loop is like the first thing that I pulled into the sick. Okay. You know, is the bass in there as well? Oh, uh, the chord. I hear some bass. Yeah, I know. That's just like. I think this is acting as the baseline too. Ah, cool. Because it has so much. Yeah, interesting. Maybe not. Um, there's definitely sub in here. Let me find it. Da, 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 da. Maybe it is just the organ too. Yeah. Yeah, it's got some. It's got some sub sub bass information in there. Yeah. yeah. M1 has been used a lot in house productions lately, like the minimal house scene, you know, like uh, they had like an overflow yeah. of M1 last year. It's it's interesting that uh, that M1 made its uh, its comeback a lot. Interesting. I love it that you use so much processing, and it it sounds really still sounds really. Um, like it doesn't necessarily feel like it's over processed or anything. I find that really nice that you can use so much. I've made it a bit wider just because I, I i think the organ two sounds pretty good when it's like a little bit like pan like uh spread a bit um mm. in terms of stereo width yeah it's nice and a little bit of delay too to give it some like space not not a lot you don't want to overdo it in the, in the sub frequencies obviously because 
delay and reverb on your on your on your subharmonics can be a big no no. But but here I think it works nicely. Yeah, it's nice. You can also make the low end mono like with for the mono maker for everything under hundred hertz or something if you might want to press it to. Volume. Yeah, I, I have. Yeah, I, I mean, I I kind of have that. Um, I have that anyway on my master. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. Nice man, I love this new uh, this new vibe. And by the way, where's the flight going? Uh, to the home, yeah. right? Yeah, Richmond, Richmond, Virginia. Um, I, I'm I'm bringing a carry on, a backpack, and a checked bag because my mom is spoiling me with gifts again this year for oh, yeah. Christmas. So you like, need to like, make like sure I'm like I'm seven years old. So yeah, uh, nice. She man. wants me to have enough space for me to to bring it back up to uh, to New York. So yeah. Well, wow, good to be home, my friend. That's uh, that's super nice. Just to check in with the family. That's always good. Yeah, you're kind of do. I mean, I guess like, I guess I. Uh, I don't know. Like this holiday season, I, I feel like I haven't been really writing as much. Well, I guess I've just been busy with pre-masters. Yeah, and also touring, uh, touring a lot. You know, it's it's also touring, the, yeah. the, the movement yep. all the time. Yeah, that's you know? that's yeah. another that's another thing. Like I like would take for granted as well. Like I used to sometimes write on like Saturdays and Sundays. It's like now I. I don't really have that time anymore. Yeah, um, yeah, I remember. Well, we if always, I'm on a flight, but we always did sessions right after your work, right? You came from work immediately, like boom, you did a run, or you did oh, you did like the session yeah. with me, and then you did a run. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. Well, well, I'm happy we could catch up, man, because uh, you know it's always good to check in, and um, yeah, thank you so much for sharing some of your tracks and your knowledge and just uh, being an all around rads guy. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, is there anything you want to plug in the end? Is there something you want to, uh, is there something that's coming that you want to invite people for a show that's coming? Uh, what's uh, what's cracking? Yeah. New Year's uh, with uh, Guy J, you know? New Year's Day with Guy J in, in New York. Yeah. Um, not New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Oh, yeah, uh, I play I play 5 to 7, 5 to 8 p.m. But uh, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be an absolute he's he's my favorite artist at the moment so i'm uh yeah i'm also, super i'm super pumped about it very sweet um, dude also i uh, he came a lot to groningen where i used to be resident at the club paradigm it's he always closed uh the the festival for like the last five hours or something it's phenomenal phenomenal music really nice really good man really good he's playing like 8 p.m to like five in the morning i think or yeah, something ridiculous and he just, like that you know it's beautiful I, I love his sets you know i even though i like him a house hat I, he can always wake me up for good guy jay uh a few hours i love that yeah yeah nice he was phenomenal in amsterdam dude he was great yeah so. yeah i saw him for a bit at the happy camper showcase he was there i think but he did, wasn't playing i think because uh guy Mansour was playing so he came your boy under is playing at do not sit this week i think yeah, he's all over the place this weekend. And uh, like, uh, he's been his last year, his last month of the year is crazy. Yeah, 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 man. Always, uh, always going around, donkey. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, don't miss your plane. Um, everybody, thanks for watching. Um, I'm planning some really cool ones for the for the um, the New Year's, the 28th of December, I believe. That's next week, right? We do a feedback session uh, live with also everybody from the Lessons in Life dojo that made tracks every day. And uh, in the new year, we're going to do uh, Era Brazil as a guest because we're donating 3% to uh, the Amazon forest, you know, so that stays healthy. And uh, I got some new artists you'll see in the newsletter or online. We will be here on Wednesdays. Uh, Wazoo, thanks, my friend. Uh, have a good flight. And everybody, uh, have a great night, day, wherever you are, and see you soon. Appreciate it. Happy holidays, everybody. Yo.